It's a lovely day outside, isn't it? Three degrees Celsius. It went down to freezing last night. Freeze, and tomorrow, I mean tomorrow, today, shoot, tomorrow is today already, wow. Tonight, the temperature is supposed to go below zero again. <laughs> oh, don't you just love Manitoba? I can't wait for summer. It's going to be so good. All two weeks of it. I guess I need to clarify because you guys don't live in Manitoba, the majority of you. Manitoba's not that cold. We just... We live in one of the colder regions on our continent. That's all. We get the cold Arctic air coming down off the Hudson's Bay. Flows right down. Right down the plains. Right down Manitoba into North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana. So it's a little bit cold up here, but that's not, it's not too bad. I'm not complaining. There's still no snow on the ground. The trees are still green. The grass is growing. And we have a longer summer than two weeks. We do. Hi. Hi there, can I get for you? I have a large coffee with one cream and a shot of espresso. Anything else? That's it. For sure, two dollars right the window. Super duper. Super excited. It's gonna be a good day. Oh, I forgot my jacket. Oh, I was gonna bring my jacket because it's kind of extra cold today. Oh. Oh, I got my sweater. We'll be okay. Now we get more than uh, we get more than two weeks of summer. We have uh, June, July, and August. Three months that are really, really hot. Hence, the air conditioning. And then. Uh, September, October, November, or starts off kind of nice and end of November and then December and then right around Christmas we get dumped on with snow. And then in January and February, that's when everything freezes over and everyone goes into hibernation. So it, it's not that bad. I just like to joke around about it, I'm not complaining. I'm just joking around about it. I do a lot of joking around on my channel. Sometimes people come across it and think I'm complaining and then they complain about my complaining in the comment section I find that kind of funny I always laugh when they do that <laughs> ah but yeah you got to get my personality to understand I guess so welcome here if you haven't already hit the subscribe button we're gonna do some trucking today we got some stuff to do we're going up to uh, Toulon I believe with a roll type as soon as I get my Timmy's we'll be on the way it's gonna be a good day even if it is cold it's gonna be a good day dropped a little bit too high you see that the guy who had it before me obviously had a higher fifth wheel or there's could be multiple other reasons but always make sure don't let that pin go over your fifth wheel and get hooked on there because then you got to go on there on the lower gear and crank it up or the higher gear lower gear the easier gear <laughs> crank it up so that that kingpin can get over your fifth wheel right and then crank it back down it's a big pain in the butt so i'm gonna crank this down a little bit and then hook up just remember when you're hooking up uh pay attention to that it's happened to me before where it slips over the front and it's it's a headache all right we're hooked on lights are all working this trailer looks like it was just redone so everything should be in order light back there 
Tires all full of air. Suspension filling. No air leaks that I can hear. Lights are working. Everything's all nicely tied in. Looking nice new and a little bit of bolt snot on here and now it's shine like real good. There we go. So I deal with these roll tights a lot and I've been given responsibility to make sure that they're all working properly, at least the ones that I hook onto working properly. All the little wheels in here are lubricated. They slide back and forth properly. I'm pretty sure this one's gonna work just fine. But if there is any issues, I've gotta make sure that by the time the highway driver gets it that those issues are taken care of. I told the shop yesterday about an, uh, an exhaust leak that was on my driver's side stack here. That's why the, the exhaust sounded so loud right by my window, right? Which was fine, I liked it. It sounded, aw sounded awesome, but sounds like they fixed it. So the truck still sounds great. It's just not so obnoxiously loud now. Which I guess is okay. <laughs> it doesn't sound right when it's from an exhaust leak. You gotta have proper exhaust for it to sound right anyway, right? So now the truck sounds normal again. They did a good job. You know, they've been doing a lot to this truck already since I've been in, since I've been in it. Yeah, they got the AC fixed, they got uh, the exhaust fixed in like two or three different places. Uh, they've kept up with the maintenance and serviced it regularly. They've got the interior lights fixed in here, let's not forget that. That'll be a big one once uh, winter time comes around because it's so dark in winter time all the time. I bet we're piecing this little truck together. I'm gonna hold it together. I like it. I don't want to. I don't want a new truck. I want this truck. I like the old trucks better. As long as we keep catching the things when it's small, and I bring it to the shop, and I let them know when these small things happen, then they can quickly and easily fix the small things, right? If I just let them fester, they turn into big things, and then the truck's down for a long time. Or if it's a big enough thing, they may even, you know, write it off and say, you know, it's not worth fixing. We don't want that to happen. We want to keep this truck running. We just need to get it. Eventually get a, the frame painted. Some shiny wheels on here. But eh, all in the future. All in the future, right? Maybe I'll buy a special polishing tool or a polishing uh, attachment, the drill attachment. Get this thing shining up a little bit. But if not, yeah, it's a work truck. It's a work truck. It does the job. And we just want to keep it going. It's got 1.85 million kilometers on it. 39,180 hours on the engine. She's been going a while. She's doing good. It's a Peterbilt. What do you expect? I mean, it's not a Kenworth, but it's Peterbilt. It's a very close second. That's how my favorite trucks work. Kenworth at the very top. Right below Kenworth. Like just a hairline below Kenworth. Peterbilt. They didn't just fix my exhaust leak, which was right here. They put a whole new muffler on there. Nice. That's why it sounds so much better. down, loaded up, buttoned up, sealed up, ready to rock and roll. Got three pieces in here this time. They're going to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Louisiana, Baton Rouge. Lost my pen somewhere. Often when I bend over to pick something up, my pen falls out of my pocket here if I don't remember to clip it onto that little ring there, see? Somewhere in here is my pen. At least I think it's in here. Maybe it's back at the yard, I don't know. So that one over there is going to Louisiana. Louisiana, am I saying it right? Louisiana. Louisiana. 
This one here is going to Gulfport. Well, your battery died, guys. You gotta remember to keep your batteries charged. Interrupted our conversation there. So the one in the back is also going to Louisiana. Uh, not Baton Rouge, though. So is it Lafayette? Louisiana, does that sound right? And the other one there is going to Gulfport, Mississippi. So they're going down south to the land of palm trees. I wish I was taking it down there, I really do. Maybe one day, maybe one day we'll hop back in a highway truck for a trip or two. We'll see, right now I'm needed here in this position. Someone needs to pick these up for the highway guys. If I won't do it, then they gotta come get them themselves. And they won't like that very much. redoing the center barrier here between uh, directions of traffic on south perimeter used to be probably what three feet high now they bumped it up to five feet I'm guessing that's good that, that's probably a good move anything to make it a little safer I think that's all because uh, there was a bad accident on the west perimeter uh, near Headingley they replaced the barriers there already, but it looks like they're doing that all the way around. They've released a 20-year plan for our perimeter here in Winnipeg. The road that goes all the way around Winnipeg. Uh, the, the plan is in 20 years to see how it's going and uh, probably do nothing. So chapter one of the day is finished. That load is buttoned up, sealed, and ready for the highway driver to take it down to Louisiana. At Louisiana. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Louisiana. That'd be a really good trip, honestly. I wish I could take it. One of these days, I, I would like to. But for now, we've got chapter two starting today. And I've got to go pick up a load of lumber that's headed down to Minnesota. One of our highway drivers is gonna want that. So you probably noticed most of our freight goes to the US our biggest trading partner and most of the stuff that's made up here gets sold to the US somebody down there always buys it that's why if you want to work here one of the requirements to to work here is the ability to cross the border into the United States so if you're not allowed to cross the border for whatever reason in a commercial vehicle uh, it's probably not gonna work out Right now, commercial vehicles are the only vehicles allowed to cross at land ports of entry in either direction. Lots of stuff going down there. I love it though, because when I was on the highway for those nine years, I loved driving in the US. You know, there's so much more to see there. A lot more people, roads are better. You know, uh, a lot more places to go. I've been all across Canada. I've been to every province and territory except for Nunavut. And I haven't been to Labrador, but I have been to Newfoundland, so legally that's the same thing. Getting loaded up here. Just started. They got that guy done. Now it's my turn. slowly getting there he's gonna put two more lifts 
behind that there. I'll tie those down and then he'll just put two, one high each across the back here for a total of two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 lifts. And I haven't seen the paperwork yet, but I'm gonna assume it's probably close to uh, between 40 and 45,000 pounds worth of wood. There he comes. Shove it in sideways, nice and tight to the ones in front of it. And I'll throw these straps over, tie it down, bring it back to the yard, and the highway driver can take it from there. Here at the 
I've got to go find Bill or Brendan or Leonard or Gary. Somebody who can drive a forklift around here. We're going to uh, move one of these to the front. See this two at the front here? We're going to take one of these lifts from the back. We're going to center the other one and put the other one centered on the top in the front. And that should balance it out for the highway driver. That way he doesn't have to worry about being 400 pounds overweight on the on the trailer. And that's one less headache he's got before he leaves. There's a forklift. Maybe I'll just grab the forklift. <laughs> I think they're in the dock here. There's Bill, he's gonna take one off there, put it up there, and he's gonna center that one on the back after. And our problems will be fixed. they should be fixed. I was at 28,000 pounds on my drives, but you have to remember there's going to be a, a sleeper on the highway truck yet. We can be up to 34,000 pounds there. So we have lots of room. And we're 400 pounds over on those in the back. So this should be just enough. There's our crazy shunt driver. Yeah. Wants to be on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> That's Leonard. All right, so our steers here are now at, what does that say? It'll switch in a bit. 11,060 pounds. Okay, we can have a maximum of 12,000. Put our drives on there. And we can look in our mirror now. Can you see it there? That's why it flips back and forth. Uh, wait for it to flip. 30,150 pounds. Okay, so that gives room for 4,000 pounds worth of sleeper. We should be good with that. Now we're gonna put our trailer tires on there. I don't know if you can still see it in the mirror there. We are now at 32,400. Good. Hey boys. Hey boys, we got a weasel. We got a, a Chevy, a very fluffy Chevy. We got a wiener. We got a commander. We got a wife. She's been very excited today, telling me that she's very excited about supper. I'm making special supper. What you making for supper? Water and butter. Noodles. I love it. Careful, watch it. Oh, 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 and what's this? So you guys know that online sensation of the feta baked with the cherry tomatoes? Well, I tweaked it and I made it my own. I added Greek seasoning, shrimp, and spinach. The shrimp will go in after. 
but I added in a whole bag of spinach to make it healthier and more delicious. Is your mouth watering too? It's gonna be good. She was very excited. She wouldn't tell me what she was making until I got home. My mom made it for me a little while ago and I wanted to tweak it and just add in some shrimp and spinach and then Greek seasoning. So I did. And this is what we're having. I'm very excited. <laughs> That's a big plate. Where's yours? <laughs> I I'll guess put... I could share some. Oh, really? You can, can you? Mm, just a little bit. That's all you get, though. I get the rest. I'm going to put some shrimp on top because oh. I'm not going to add the shrimp in so that keeps his leftovers better. Mm. It looks delicious. I hope you like it. Oh, I know I will. Oh, oh yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah, right there. Oh, that one fell off. Adds character. Very exciting. <clears throat> We're supposed to get frost tonight. Yay. That means that Brit's flowers have got to go into there so that uh, the frost doesn't fall onto them. Better get them in there. It's supposed to go down to zero in the next hour or two. And just so you know, that meal was to die for. That was delicious. Very satisfying. Very satisfying. I hope it made you very jealous. <laughs>